Having discussed the two motivating examples, let's now talk about software correctness. Let's define the notion more formally. So correctness, as I said, is a relative notion. So you have to make sure it's consistent of your implementation with respect to its uh, specification. So this is a very important assumption we are making. You always got some precondition and postcondition. So you have the uh, specification. It's a very important assumption in order to really for you to claim that your software is actually correct. Right, and then we're going to introduce a formal and systematic way for formalizing a program S and also its uh, specification. Think about the implementation part is really the S over here. And then we got uh, specification, including precondition Q and also post condition R. And this is the syntax you will have to get used to. So we got curly brackets over here and then we enclose the precondition first. And then we got the implementation here and then we got the post condition. And uh, I'll give you examples right away. So the previous uh, two motivating examples that we spoke about, they can be formulated using uh, the so-called whole triple. I'm going to talk about it in just a moment. So these are the two uh, formulations of the two programs that we uh, spoke about. Let's uh, take a look how, how we can do it. Uh, this page over here, you don't really have to worry about this part just yet. Okay, for now, please just ignore that. Okay, I'm just going to focus on this particular program that we spoke about before one of the programs we spoke about. So now, how can you apply the syntax for whole triple? Uh, so let's say this. What you do is you're going to put curly brackets over here. Okay, curly brackets, and then put something over here, and also curly brackets over here. So basically what you're going to put is, you're going to put here the precondition. So whatever the precondition is, you're going to put it. If you got multiple conditions over here under require, you're going to say, you're going to uh, put it together using conjunction, okay? And also similarly, you got post condition over here, i larger than 13. So if you got multiple post conditions over here, you're also going to conjoin it as a single Boolean using a conjunction. So this will be where you put the post condition. And then this part over here is the uh, implementation, this part over here. So, and the implementation can be arbitrarily complicated, which we'll speak about thoroughly uh, later in the lecture. So this part over here. So that's about the syntax. So now how do we apply this? So what, what I'm get, uh, let me just uh, copy this one here so I can also use it to for the second example. Okay, so now what about the precondition? It will simply just be i larger than three, right? That's a precondition. What about a post condition? Another part of the spec. It will be i larger than 13. And then what about implementation, the blue one here? It will be i is assigned to i plus 9. So this is basically uh, what we uh, what we so call a whole triple over here. So let me just uh, box it. The entire thing over here, including implementation, precondition, and post condition. This is so called a whole triple. And uh, as we said, it's actually a predicates evaluating to either true or false. So we can actually prove it uh, in general whether it's a tautology or disprove it by using counterexample. And more specifically, whenever you can prove a particular whole triple being a predicate is a tautology, those that means your program is actually correct. Your source program, basically. Whatever source program where you actually formulate into the whole triple, if the whole triple can be proved as a tautology, in that case, the program is actually correct. Otherwise, if it can be disproved by using some example, not as a tautology, in that case, that means your program is not correct. Okay. So over here, I'm just going to also put the notes over here. So this means your program is incorrect. Okay, so that's the uh, the overall picture I would like you to uh, get exposed to, first of all. And remember the first motivating example that we spoke about, we actually allow certain value by the precondition that's going to cause some post-condition violation, right? Uh, I will re uh, you can refer to the uh, previous video. And from our pre previous example, so that means it would be this particular case that we talk about, okay? So it would be this particular case for this program over here that we spoke about. What about the next, uh, the second motivating example? Let's just go there. The second motivating example, let me just uh, paste the uh, fragment I got 
previously. So now we also need to put, so again, this would be the implementation, and this part here would be the precondition, and this part here would be the postcondition. Okay, and then uh, we're just going to write it. The precondition will be i larger than five. Implementation will be i is assigned to i plus nine. And the post condition is i is larger than 13, right? And the whole thing is, again, called a whole triple. Uh, in this time, let me just write it a little bit more, uh, direct to the point. It's a whole triple, let me just remind you once more, it's a whole triple, and it's a predicate. And remember when we uh, discussed the uh, second, motiva uh, second motivating example, every input value that would be allowed by the precondition once uh, executed by using the implementation is guaranteed to terminate and also to establish the post condition, right? That's what we discussed. So that means the program is actually correct. And because it is actually correct in this case, uh, in this particular case, it can be proved as a tautology. As a tautology. Meaning that the program is actually correct. Right, just want you to see the uh, different possible consequences once you formulate the uh, uh, whole triple actually from your source program. All right, so that's about these two. Let me give uh, go back to the uh, uh, slides. I will speak about these uh, proof obligation uh, and also some visualization about the uh, whole triple a little bit later in the slides. Okay, bear with me. Okay, let me go back. So these are, number one, you want to know about how to write a syntax for the whole triple, right? That's something I already explained using two example programs. And this can either be proved to be true, if that can be proved as true, meaning there's a tautology. So that means your source program is actually correct with respect to its uh, specification. Uh, for example, the, uh, the first motivating program can be proved as a tautology, right? It can be proved as always true. On the other hand, the same format of the whole triple for the second program that we spoke about, right? You can see the precondition here is different. In that case, it may not be able to prove as a, a tautology, okay? Uh, let me just say uh, something uh, something back over here. So this, when you uh, look back, so this is actually, actually the second uh, motivating example that we spoke about, which is correct. And this was the uh, first Motiv motivating example that we spoke about, which is incorrect, right? I just said it uh, in the reverse way. All right, so that's about how to use a whole triple, and then we'll speak about its meaning uh, in just a moment. Okay, let's now move on. So let's talk about talk about a whole logic. Let's say we're given an uh, implementation S and also precondition Q and post condition R. So we're just using the same symbols as we uh, used in the previous uh, illustrations. So we write this uh, so-called whole triple. So this is a so-called correctness predicates. So that can be either proved as a tautology or it can be disproved using counter example. In case uh, you can actually prove uh, this particular whole triple as a predicate, as a tautology, in that case, that means the original program uh, combined with uh, its specification is actually correct. Otherwise, if you can disprove it, so that means the original program is actually incorrect. So you want to get that connection over here uh, clear, uh, clearly. How do we interpret a whole triple over here? Okay, uh, let me read it out and then I'll illustrate to you visually. If uh, implementation program S start executing in a state satisfying the precondition Q, and then uh, two things we want to make sure uh, in order for the program to be correct. Number one, the program S should terminate, number one. And number two, given that it terminates, it will terminate in a state that will satisfy the post condition R. You can see that somehow correspond to what we said uh, in the very beginning of the lecture about correctness. So I'm just hoping that some repetition over here can really uh, reinforce your understanding about software correctness. So let me illustrate how, how you can uh, uh, visualize the, the whole uh, triple over here. Okay, so this is a diagram I'd like to show you. Okay, the only circle, uh, okay, so for now, I would like you to dis uh, just disregard certain parts, which we're going to cover later. Could you please just disregard this part over here and also disregard this particular circle, the outermost circle over here, just for now, all right? So whenever you're given this particular whole triple, you got a precondition Q, okay? So that means you can think about every predicate is like a set, uh, a set of satisfying value. So given that you're trying to execute your program in a particular state, 
Okay, this can be a particular state that's actually satisfying the queue. And then what you can do is you're going to execute the implementation S. You can think about this particular implementation is going to transform this particular source states into somewhere in this particular region uh, over here. You can think about this particular region is all the satisfying value for the post condition over here, right? So let's uh, be more precise over here. So you can see this part here is the precondition. And this part here is the implementation, which is going to turn from state to states. And this part here is the post condition. Okay, so now what we really want to uh, make uh, in, in order for a whole triple to be uh, actually uh, correct, to be uh, actually a tautology, right? Conceptually, you want to think about any states that actually will start from over here uh, after executing uh, the implementation S, number one is going to terminate. And number two is actually going to, going to end up being a states. You can think about this as like a pre-states. A single states and this part over here is a post states okay should be a dash so the pre state satisfies the precondition q and the post state over here satisfy the uh, post condition r all right and the implementation over here should also terminates so there are two parts over here so part number one is about the termination part part number two is about the post states actually satisfying the uh, post condition uh these are the two parts and usually when we want to do proof we want to prove these two separately for the separation of concern and let me just mention uh, one more thing which you will see in the slides if we only talk about uh so termination will be a, like a separate proof Especially we worry, we have to worry about uh, termination once we get into loops. Okay, for now, just uh, notice that, uh, just know that in general, we have to prove about termination. Okay, and number two over here, you can think about this part here is assuming termination. Assuming termination. Okay, you're going to prove that the uh, resulting state, the post state, is going to satisfy the post condition. And one more thing to mention, whenever we talk about proof number two, that one there, you are going to prove that assuming uh, termination, which means we don't really prove the termination uh, as part of the proof for number two, it's only going to be done separately in number one. So we say that for number two, once you can, uh, as long as you can, if you can prove number two, it's only for partial correctness. Okay, it's a very important term for you to know. Okay, so called partial correctness. And if you uh, if you only prove number two, you can only get partial correctness. However, if you can also prove number one, in that case, number one combined with number two, it would be total correctness. Okay, so if you only got number two, number two alone is going to be partial correctness. However, if you can, you can also prove uh, termination and also number two, right? If you can prove partial correctness plus termination proof, in that case, it would be total correctness. Okay, so these are the two uh, notions you want to also get very uh, clear about between total correctness versus uh, partial correctness. Okay, let's go back to the slides. Okay, we got separation of concern. We actually got uh, number one. We need to prove a termination separately, right? And also, we need to uh, this will, uh, and then we also have to prove that assuming that the program is going to terminate, and then we want the post state, the resulting state, to be satisfying the post condition, right? These are two the two separate proofs. And if you get A and B, it's going to be total correctness, right? Exactly what I just mentioned on the page. All right, so hopefully so far just about some definition and then the takeaway message will be you have to know again the syntax from the previous slides and now what you want to know about is for this particular whole triple given you want to know how to interpret that and in order to interpret that you can see the textual definition over here but you may also want to uh, just com uh, connect this with our understanding of any predicates as a set of, set of uh, satisfying values so given any pre-states 
that satisfy the uh, precondition. You're going to transform that using the implementation. Hopefully that will terminate. And then the resulting states hopefully will also satisfy the post condition R. So this is how you understand what a whole triple, the so-called correctness predicates really means. All right, let's go back here. Let's now do a little bit of uh, exercise to really uh, give you more intuition about the whole triple, okay? And you can think about this part here, this part with the Q and also with uh, the R over here. So these two parts uh, constitute the uh, contract view for your software, right? With the pre precondition and postcondition. Okay, so uh, again, so we always use a Q uh, for this lecture for consistency, Q for precondition and R for postcondition. Let's think about the different uh, combinations for the precondition and postcondition over here and think about what they really means, okay? So can you tell me, uh, you can pause the video and think about what this really means. What if I have a program with uh, implementation S can be anything that arbitrary, okay? And I simply got true over here and I got R over here. So what does it really mean if I have a program like this? Well, I have a program like this simply because uh, simply means that my precondition here is simply true. That means any input value passed by the customer or the clients would be acceptable. So this will be, uh, well, all the inputs are valid, so this will be the most user-friendly program, right? You want to think about. In order for this program to be true, you uh, the whole thing to be a uh, tautology. You want to make sure given any arbitrary inputs that's passed by the user because the precondition is always satisfied, you want to make sure executing program S is going to terminate and also end up in the states that's going to satisfy the post condition R, right? That's how, that's how you interpret that. What about number two over here? I simply change uh, the change the precondition from false uh, to true to false, right? So what does that really mean? Well, this goes for another extreme. So that means this will be very demanding uh, precondition over here. So all the input values are simply just invalid. There's no way for the clients using your program over here to actually ever get to this part over here because the precondition is always violated. So this will be the most useless program for the clients, right? So you can think about to prove this uh, program correct, it's not very meaningful because in that case, if you run it at the runtime, the precondition is false anyway. Okay, so we just, uh, let's not worry about uh, any, uh, just think about if you are thinking about subcontracting, just think about uh, the precondition here is the uh, destroying version that's from the ancestor, right? You simply just got false. All right, how about number three? So what if the post condition over here is simply true? Okay, so what does it really mean for this particular program to be correct? That simply means uh, given that Q is satisfied, the precondition, if we execute S and it terminates, and then anything as output will be okay in order to be correct. What, what does that mean to be anything will be correct? That means if you want, want me to sort some program, I simply print out hello world to you. If you want me to sort uh, in the descending order, I simply give you the ascending order, right? So it doesn't really matter what kind of uh, garbage uh, output I might give to you. So the post condition will always be satisfied. So this is not good actually, right? So all the output values are valid. So now question for you, if I got such a program over here, do you think the clients should be very happy or the supplier should be very happy? Supplier should be very happy because as for me as a supplier, it doesn't matter what I do over here. It will always be acceptable as far as the contract is concerned, right? So this will be most risky for the clients because Whatever they want to, uh, they expect to happen is not guaranteed. However, it will be very, very easy or even trivial for the supplier because anything they do can be satisfied. Okay, number four. What if I change the uh, post condition from true to false? In that case, I would say it's kind of the opposite, right? So now in this case, it would be very infeasible for the supplier because if you want me to sort an array in the non-descending order, I really do it. However, I can never satisfy your contracts because false will always be violated, right? False will always trigger a post condition violation. So this one here means all the output values are invalid, right? And then, so there'll be the most challenging coding task or even infeasible task for the supplier, right? So I just want to give you, I just tuned uh, different parts of the contract uh, to the extreme cases just to show you what that really means. Hopefully that can also help you gain some, uh, gain some intuition about the whole triple. Finally, what if I got this? 
I simply say any input value is okay. Also, any output value is okay. Basically, this would be as if if you have any precondition or any postcondition, they are never violated. It would be as if you didn't use any contracts. It would be as if you simply abandoned the semi contracts, which would be, which uh, is one of the very uh, important learning outcomes for this course. I would say you really want to avoid having precondition and postcondition here. Postcondition over here simply just being true, all right? Because that simply means that your program is simply un, uh, is simply not constrained by any contracts. So that would be uh, very uh, un, uninformative uh, to anybody who's going to use your program, either as, uh, as a client who want to use it or for a supplier who wants to implement that. Right? You want to be you really want to give some contracts. All right. So that's about the uh, uh, five different examples for the whole triple. I would like to uh, show to you. So you want, may want to study that and then think about it. And then uh, for your particular de uh, particular developments, I would say which one you want to go into is up to you, right? But you, re you really want to know what you're doing.